Okay, the last one we did spend quite a bit of extra time on on it. So this one we're going to go over it just a little bit faster. This is all coming up to using all the stuff we have went over in the master studies. So you'll begin to notice the flow and the force that is being pushed through the body. This one is quite a bit of complicated pose again uh, because it's in perspective and you might wonder how exactly would you approach this from this angle and I pick this angle not because it's lewd or anything but because it's a challenging pose so how would we tackle this difficult pose here it's quite simple if you know the rules so we see the scythe right here has, is carrying the weight of the Ellen character here. It's sort of supporting the weight of her body. So we know that we should focus force somewhat on the scythe, but not too much on her legs. How and where is this force being brought pushed to the scythe so it can keep her body stable and if we push if we keep that idea of her body being pushed to the scythe we begin to see just where our force is going to be pushed in this girl and it's right in where her stomach is right here see so, when starting this, I don't start with the head, or I don't start this time with her crotch, because that would, I would be able to lead right into her stomach, in perspective. I start with the area that is being led right back to the scythe, and that is the stomach. So I'm going to draw some arrows here indicating this action. Now, I don't, gestures are, as a reminder, they're not supposed to be nice, clean, but for demonstration purposes, I'm making it nice and clean for you so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. But when I'm doing these for myself, I use multiple lines. So to feel out the force, the energy throughout the pose. And then when I'm done, I lower the opacity of the layer and draw the next step, which is the construction step. To lead into her pelvis, I draw multiple lines, just like the master studies we've been doing, into her crotch area, which makes another pushing force this way. See, you see that action? Through here, through here, like so. Now, um, for her bunny tail, I'll make the same movement. It doesn't have to be stationary. It can be like this to follow the flow of the gesture. Now, I'm going to make another arrow indicator where I'm going to go next. Since this is in perspective and we want to show volume of, for this eventually, I will, I will put the straight, which indicates the tilt of the body, the tilt of the pelvis. Now put it low enough, but not too low, so that you can see the indication of where, where to go. To finish off the back of the, the where the, um, the shoulder is, I will put a, finishing this off in a forceful shape, like this, and put a straight at where I put the, the straight for the tilt right here. Now this is becomes a sort of like a bean shape as you can see. So if you want to get good at seeing forceful shape you can pr try practicing beans. You can see the contours moving around the beam, up and over around the beam. See, it's the same 
ideology that we're, we're doing here. Now we're moving into the legs. I could do a straight, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a straight. Just one nice long line. It doesn't have to be the series of asymmetrical lines we were doing from before. However, I will add an asymmetry right here where her foot and this part of the muscle is. Not all the way from the leg, but some parts. So you can break some parts up into asymmetry if for your convenience. For the next leg, which is free-flowing and not weight-bearing, so this is the ground plane. For this leg, I will then do the series of asymmetrical lines going this way into the muscle right here, leading into the tibula, which I will indicate with a curve because, as you remember, the tibula is curved and the fibula is straight. So this will be the bone. We will see the tibula and the fibula. And it will lead right into this part right here. If we zoom in, this little bony landmark, or this land, yes, landmark, which is on the tibula right here, which leads into the foot, and I will indicate the foot as an arrow, like so. Where the areas where there are no curves, you can add straight. For this, though, we will add a volume, a perspective volume, cylinder, to be exact. Now, how do you get the limbs of the arms? This is you have to change what I usually do is change the color of my of my of my in the color window so that I when I'm going over it in the pass I can see that yes this arm is in perspective um, I will curve my lines this way like in a swivel but make sure to make them a lot more shorter so you're not making them long you may have to make them shorter like like so if you make them long if you make a you make a line that's long it's not in perspective but if you make it short and curve like asymmetry it is in perspective it will tell you that yes this is in perspective and then when you make these lines in a different color then move back to your original color which is this and then finish off the line like so. You can then add more perspective volumes to your hand, right? Like so. So now this is in perspective, which then connects to the scapula. And I'll put this in a different color. Uh, I'll put this in blue. Just real quickly, you can then see that this will connect to the scapula. If you were to take this and put the construction in, and this is the bone area, and since this is in a pronated view, I uh, I will then in the in the construction phase make this an X because the bones make this this formation here, and so on. Like so, and then you will attach the mus muscles to the body. Anyway, you can see how this is very useful. Now for the head, I will just add the head in, and bunny ears are not, this isn't really necessary, I'm just adding bunny ears because the bunny ears are cute. And to finish this off, I will then add the the scythe, which is being held by her, like this, leading to the ground plane, which is right here. Yeah, 
Okay, so as you can see, this is how I would approach the gesture from this back angle. It all is leading up to the same principles that we have been using from the master studies. The same swivelly effects, the same forceful effects. So that's why master studies are very, very important. I could do I could fill the course up with more and more and more examples of this, but the best way to see this kind of flow is by doing the master studies. You have to do hundreds of them. But do hundreds. When you, when you do hundreds, then you can break apart the, the body, the figure, into these simple, free-flowing um, design and you can play with this you can do so much with this okay next video we'll do more examples